Hi, I'm Leslie McVeigh. Welcome to CTN Member Highlights. We're here today in Lincoln Park with Tempo Art, a new member of Community Television Network. And the artist who has done the installation behind me is with us, as well as the curator and some of the members of Tempo Art. And we'll hear how it started, why it started, and what the mission is. I'm here right now with Alice Spencer, who's one of the, the movers and shakers of Tempo Art. Hi, Alice. Hi. Um, tell me how this started, and um, was it over the kitchen table, or what, what happened? I know you're a wonderful artist, so of course your head's always in that world, but how did Tempo Art start? Um, well, as you may know, we've had a, uh, a permanent public art program in the city now for 20 years. But a few years back, there were um, a number of people that went to the city and said, where can I put a piece of temporary art? And the city said, nowhere, because we don't have guidelines to put temporary pieces anywhere. So a group of us sat down and we wrote temporary guidelines for the city. Once we'd done that, we decided we need a program. You know, a, a program that supports artists who will use the program. And that's how Tempo started. And was it meant to be, and how often is the art supposed to change? How um, and where? Is it going to be right here in Lincoln Park all the time, or um, where? Mm -hmm. um, our, our overarching theme is places in transition, because there's so much energy in Portland around infrastructure, around changing what happened in the 1970s when urban renewal happened. And so where can it keep our eye out for places where there are, is the potential for conversation um, and the potential for issues being discussed and where there's already a lot of energy. And that's why our first piece is here because the arterial has just been reconfigured back into a street. The park itself is going to be um, reconfigured to, I think, 90% of its original size. So this was it's a, a great place because it's already a center of, of conversation in the city. Um, and we're highlighting the park as well, which is undergoing renovation. One of the things that happened in the 70s when the arterial was put in is that a neighborhood was decimated. And so that's a historical reference for this piece. Um, it's also true that because this piece is about home, that it um, touches on the immigrant um, population that lives right nearby, and lots of other people, um, all of us in fact, who, for whom home is a very important um, notion and need in our lives. And I think also this park has been a haven for the homeless as yeah. well as the Occupy mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. So it's it's ideal for yeah. your first. Lots of lots of that kind of thing. Um, we are trying to keep our conversation around the idea of home yeah. and um, and keep it there because I think that's appropriate for an art piece and not to politicize it. Um, but you know, what we want people to do is to look at it and say, what is this about? What does it mean to me? What's the story I can find in it um, for myself? Hi, Sean. I'm with Sean Foley now, who's the curator of this um, wonderful thing. And it's a little different um, way of curating a, a show. It's not really a show, but a, an installation. Right. Tell us a little bit about how they approached you to do this and why you accepted. <laughs> well, they, they approached me. I, I used to live in Portland, so I, I know a lot of the people that were on the Temple Board, and they're all very uh, inspirational um, uh forces in the Portland art world and they you know it's another reason why I miss Portland they just get together and come up with these ideas and make them happen and so uh, this hasn't happened before this temporary public art you know committee and it's a uh, it's a uh, 
private volunteer board and they needed somebody to help them find artists. And so um, I received a call from uh, a couple of my dear friends saying, we're going to do this thing and I think we need a curator. And so um, my role as a curator in this was pretty much to put together uh, a group of artists. I presented eight different artists. They told me the theme, uh, what they were hoping for, what the mission of uh, Tempo was. And I spent some time uh, researching artists and some some of the artists I presented were uh, friends of mine that I have worked b with before who's like Judith fits the theme of a place in transition and um, and then some were more conceptual I mean I wasn't sure none of us were sure so I, I wanted to uh, put out a big spread and then we had all these really nice conversations I did you know PowerPoint presentations and asked uh, answered questions about everyone and uh, we started out with eight and they thought about them and we would be in communication about uh, you know if they had a question about uh, this person's work or could I see this slide again or you mentioned that they did another project somewhere so um, so that went on for a while and they narrowed the list down to four artists and then from those four artists we asked for proposals and so uh, uh, I drafted up a request for proposals uh, talking about the theme uh, the budget all of those issues and we had four proposals come in and then we met again and um, at that meeting I walked the committee through uh, all of the artists intentions and um, uh, translated the proposals and then answered their questions and and it was really interesting experience for me since I'm an artist I'm only a part-time curator uh, amateur curator maybe and um, uh, so I was able to it was a learning experience in both ways like their concerns about um, this being a public piece and then also uh, I was able to help them understand uh, issues about uh, like fabrication like how these things get made and and yes that may seem like a really ambitious project but there's a way that artists um, hire out work and um, you can you can realize it so then once Judith was selected then I I spoke with Judith quite a bit I, I made I made this clear from the start because it's their project it's their labor of love and I'm honored to be a part of it they they ultimately chose the artists the committee because they're the ones that live in this city so all I tried to do was present every artist in in uh, the best light I could and then the committee got together and they selected Judith not my not me and I was pleasant you know I was I would have been thrilled to work with any of them but it was nice to see Judith especially learning that she was overseas okay I'm now with Ziggy Dr Drastowski the engineer for this hi hi how you doing? I'm doing great. So tell me about, um, have you ever worked with Judith before? I have not worked with Judith. I actually met Judith uh, through Pamela Hawks and um, I'd moved to Portland in October and Tempo got in contact with me because Judith wanted some local engineering support um, and my company Comic Kinetic specializes in doing engineering for artists and mostly you know installed and built work so uh, it was kind of a perfect fit and good timing for everyone involved and yeah. So I jumped right into the process when I got here. Well, it looks complicated to me. Um, you're the engineer. Was it complicated? It's not as complicated as it looks, which is a good thing. Um, part of the beauty of the sculpture is that it kind of looks like it's falling over, but in actuality, all the loads are pretty well centered. Um, so a lot of the engineering was about how to set the footings and make sure the piece is sited well in the park. Um, and just, you know, all the kind of safety issues should people decide to climb on it and making sure it's it's just structurally sound but it it looks it looks tippier than it actually is um, so do you play that little game with the wood blocks and you pull up J uh, i can't remember the name of it jenga jenga i played jenga a lot growing up but i i think and legos was what got me into engineering yeah actually. yeah um, well those two things together would give you that whole balance yeah, yeah. so i think it's fabulous and uh, it does look like you know you want to stay away from it and but it's safe. <laughs> it is. It's definitely safe. Um, but that's that's part of the beauty of the artwork is because it, it sets you off balance a little bit when you look at it. And 
you know, that little bit of fear you have yeah. about it falling over is part of what's it's so really, engaging about it. Um, it really is. Yeah. It's, it, you, you, you see it and you just have to come over and see what's this all about. Yeah, it has a certain gravity to it, um, yeah. both figuratively and literally, which is nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Maybe, maybe it was right here. Yeah, no, we got a gravel delivery yeah. coming, that's all. So they're going to come and bring gravel for inside that retaining wall. Oh, yep. Yeah. And then they're going to re-saw it. I think they said, I need to turn my email, but they're, I think they're going to bring some saw. It. I'm now with the artist, artist, Judith Hoffman. Hi, Judith. Hi, thank you for meeting with me. I love your piece, and um, I know what the theme was. We know what the history of this park is and um, also I know from reading about you a little bit of your history and your interest in housing and, and art. So tell me what happened in your head when you got the proposal? Um, well I was, I was thrilled um, to be able to submit a proposal um, so I started researching I didn't know very much, I still don't given its history, but I started really looking at Portland and the history and the history of Lincoln Park. Um, and I was thrilled for that the Tempo Art Committee was doing what they're doing, bringing temporary, I mean, as an artist, this is great work, and I, I was um, thrilled about that. But from the perspective of the work, you know, I started to really think my work does center around the home. Um, and I and so I started thinking about what what could what 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 would work what would it ask the community to ask questions um, while still hopefully being something that excited people. Well, I think you've been very successful. It's fantastic, okay, and the buildings that are stacked here um, are based on the Sears robot catalog. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So the my, my one of my real deep interests is um, in the early 1900s the Sears, um, Sears Roebuck catalog started selling houses um, that came fully um, uh, fully ready to be made so the sort of Ikea style flat packed in a shipping container with every hill drilled and you just needed a contractor to lay a foundation and if you were handy you could build your home yourself and by today's um, standards with inflation and things like that they were for a four bedroom three bed bathhouse they were about eleven thousand dollars so these were homes which were accessible to blue-collar workers to farmers and they're really the origin of the American home this is where so you don't see very many Sears kits anymore but you see iteration after iteration on these styles so you'll see you know and that's a lot to do with the architecture itself I mean Sears was definitely in relate in 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 communication with architectural styles but they had sort of Con uh, congealed everything into one. So they were really ahead of the times. Very much so. Very much so. And and also, I mean, you know, also the the the, the accessibility. I think is something that you know to think about that you could order a home, um, you could choose from a style, you could customize it, um, and that it was affordable and it was really good hard wood and solid materials. It wasn't. You know, it, it, it was it changed the landscape of, of the home ownership. And I have seen the the images um, and and it went from something very simple to the Queen Anne style. For sure. Yeah. yeah, so it was I think it was over thirty or forty years um, that they sold these and they had everything from very detailed Victorian to very basic, you know, housing. And um, just I mean it's just amazing. And it gave people a chance to have a home. It absolutely did. It, it absolutely did. People who otherwise wouldn't have, actually. So, you know, that's, uh, to me, I mean, not only just in terms of the aesthetics, but, but about that, you know, is just, I think that's something that, you know, I, I'd like to kind of think about. Well, and here in the city right now, housing is a real issue um, across the board. And to have something like this for people to look at and wonder, and then then talk, to, you know, have dialogue yeah. about what's happening in the city around housing and around um, the needs of the new Mainers, yeah. the immigrants yeah. coming here now. And this location is perfect for this piece. Oh, good. Well, you know, I mean, I'm I'm not a Portland resident, so I can't really speak to you know all of the kind of complicated housing issues which are here um, but you know I certainly hope that the piece raises questions um, and inspires 
folks. Yeah. And I hope it inspires the city to keep it here permanently. I, well, I hope I hope that, and I also hope that uh, that the Tempo Art Committee is a, a Tempo Art is able to continue doing this and sort of continue the dialogue for the public. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so it's much. Been great. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you.